Surf's up. It's another episode of the Maui Snake Show. I am bringing the foremost expert in Asian matters beyond even just Counter-Strike, but literally all Indian culture. It is Bla. He has been on the road for, I want to say, three weeks now or so, working practically four weeks, four weeks of on the road, working every CS2 event known to man. Thank you, Bla, and welcome to the shop. To the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, Asian matters. I, I throw in Southeast Asia as well. I know a bit about, you know, my my neighboring countries as well. So, yeah, dude, like uh, I was actually watching a few of your shows. So I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Help me pass the time in some of the flights I had. So, yeah. Glad. I'm glad. Um, I want to say that you've been really, really killing it on these these broadcasts. I've actually agreed with your analysis, especially for the the grand final. We're not. We'll we'll get into we'll get into all the, your predictions and stuff like that later. We'll get into all of the the big talk. But I mean, no, you like you've been b practically speaking on every big CS2 event that has happened so far. You've been on Sydney. You were on Thunder Pit or Rubet. It was no, Rubet. Yeah, yeah, Rubet. And then uh, you were obviously just coming back from from CAC. So. Yeah, nice, nice uh, start to the to the Counter Strike Two space. Well, let's actually, you know what? Let's go out of order a little bit, Be just because this is kind of the topic at hand right now. That you've been working all these CS Two events, we've been looking so closely at the game. It has really just kind of like, I gave it, given the game a facelift, given CS Go a facelift. What do you think are the the biggest changes when you're watching CS Two versus CS Go? Biggest changes. All right. Um, look, firstly, yeah, the facelift obvious right it looks much uh, much prettier right now it looks uh fucking great honestly and then obviously the uh the smoke utility thing i think it got a little blown out of proportion by the by the players by the community they're like oh my god it's gonna be a fucking complete meta shifter and yes yes it has changed the way uh you know a lot of every team plays the game right now but not to an extent where you're like it's a whole brand new game right it's like still the same old fundamentals you have to follow and everything I think the um, the biggest difference for me, and this is me being a little critical right now, would be obviously we still have a few moments. Now, I haven't touched a game. Uh, I think it was a new update that came out like uh, a few a few days ago. But like in Sydney, for example, or even online, um, we saw a few clips coming in. I think it was Twist. I think it was very recent, actually, when Twist was like, you know, I don't even know how I hit that shot. And you look at that and you're like, yeah, this wouldn't really be happening in CSGO when you know when you when you see someone shooting sure you might see someone getting CSGO to missing a shot or whatnot but it's kind of weird when you see a player a top player you know get a kill and even he's like I have no idea how I got that kill I shouldn't be getting that kill right so that is a bit it's a bit jarring and obviously when you're looking at the highest levels of competition you don't want that element of like what the fuck happened to be a commonality in all these games so that is something I hope gets fixed soon so to speak right but apart from that like uh i'm also looking at the um some of the newer well it could be because of the new tools coming in I don't, I don't think we've seen as much of innovation when it comes to broadcast so to speak we did we did see the the recent pgl hut for cac i think that looked pretty fucking sick but overall it kind of feels more the same honestly man like game look game looks prettier it sounds different the smokes, the the behavior, and some of the utilities obviously different. Apart from that, it's pretty much CS:GO. You know, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. I would say that yeah. with yeah, with with the with the smoke and the nade thing, I think any small change to the game, because we're a community of people where we don't really have to deal with too much change, we just act like it's the biggest deal ever, even if it's like a 5%, 10% margin in how much the game actually interacts differently. But yeah. as opposed to, you know, a space like Valorant where it's like, okay, this new agent is just changing absolutely everything about the game. Like now, okay, we all have to rethink our approach because this one agent can do X, Y, Z thing. And But I mean, I'm seeing the nades contribute to slightly different rounds playing out than they would have before. I would say that the most obvious thing when I'm watching the game is that it's MR12. That, that to me is... It's just faster. That's actually true. Yeah, yeah. That's that's something I wanted to touch on. Completely slipped my mind, actually. MR12. Um, look, it, it does feel more... From, from a viewer's perspective, I feel like the games have been pretty intense, so to speak, right? Like, we've seen a lot of uh, very close games uh, because of how things pan out. But it's two extremes. Like, I go back to the Sydney Grand Finals where complexity and phase had a bit crazy... Um, best of three in the final map but then you look at some of the other games which are just complete 
you know, stomp, so to speak. But are you going to blame that on MR12 or the fact that one team is just clearly better than the other team, right? And I just don't think we've had enough data overall. But I will say this. The economy right now is not in a good place. And I know there are a lot of people smarter than I have come up with like different, different ways to approach it. I've even uh, suggested maybe the CD side and T side economy could be segregated, could be separated, and maybe you can have a, you know, a different approach to the two sides to kind of balance things out. Um, I'm not sure whether, you know, how, which way that's going to go. Obviously, there are a lot of like consequences from making a change like that. But I think the most fundamental change I would like Valve to try out right now, at least like immediately right over for the major would be the lost bonus scrapping the 1400 like just scrap it just fucking scrap it keep it like dinner. it's so fucking brutal mm -hmm. right now for the cts and because of how the rounds play out you just don't have enough time to really amount to comeback so if a t's win the pistol and a couple of just you know one more crucial gun round it's usually the cts winning maybe four rounds and that's a trend i've seen throughout the entire month throughout all the online games all the land events the good teams the bad teams the mid teams it's like a couple of crucial rounds being lost, and unless you manage to win a force buy, it's a nightmare uh, on the second half. So, I don't know if that's going to be, a per, you know, a, a proper fix at nineteen hundred loss bonus, but I think it's, I think it's a bare minimum, you know. If I were to implement any change, what I have just kind of come up with off the top of my head, without too much number crunching, is just decrease the diffuse kit by $200. I think 400 is just very expensive for a diffuse kit. I don't think the molly needs to be 600 for the CT either. Uh, and I would also just make the A4 and A1S $100 cheaper each. I, just like really, really slight tweaks. I don't think that you need to... I actually think that there's, in a weird way, is like a place for the 1400, like that reset feeling. But I just think that come gun round the cts are just spending so much more money when the t's have more ways to get money because they can plant the bomb and why is the yeah. uh the seat the t side which has an easier time buying all the utility also rewarded with getting more money with a bomb plant like i, I get the t's side is supposed to be inherently harder but with maps like anubis and even inferno to an extent which i've actually swung into the t side favor there's no reason that they should have uh, also easier economy when the map is already also T-sided, like pick one or the other. If every map was like, say, 55, 45 CT favored, I get where the economy's at right now. But now we have different maps in the pool or the meta that they play out on means that I, I feel like the, the T-side having cheaper guns is just, it's kind of an antiquated way to balance the sides when that's just not how it even plays out anymore. And, and also, I think one more thing where, you know, which... It's not, it's not really spoken about nowadays when everyone's complaining about, all oh, the map's super T-sided or super CT-sided. I'm okay with that. I think having a map which is, let's look at Train, for example, right? Like, you know, it is fucking CT-sided as hell, but I don't fucking care. It's fucking great. It's great. Like, you know, it's much more harder on the T-side. And yes, if you slip up on the CT-side, let a couple of rounds slip, oh shit, you're in a bit of a pickle now, and you better make sure that you're winning this crucial, uh, you know, few, like maybe winning the T-pistol, for example, becomes a prerequisite. And... I don't think there is anything fundamentally wrong in a map being, you know, more heavily T-sided or CT-sided. I think it adds flavor to the maps. I think it adds more variety in how we, we look at the maps we have. Now, if there is a fundamental problem with the map, as in like, you know, uh, the map layout or maybe how spawn times work. Yeah, let's fix that, right? Let's work on that. But not because you're like, oh, the map's too T-sided. So what? I don't care. I like the fact that Anubis on the CTs... Sure, I would maybe want to see a couple of changes here and there, but I like the fact that you have to take a risk. You have to take yes. a gamble yeah. to get go for map control, and you know, and and that is fucking cool for me. That's cool. That's you know, be people being forced to play, come up with cool shit and play, you know, an interesting style of CS, which you won't see in other maps, right? So I, I am completely against the the idea that oh, you know, maps uh, should be completely balanced, and that's how everything pans out. No, I disagree with uh, on that, and I would hate to see an economy change come in because of that. But when it comes to what you said, I completely agree with. Maybe not the incendiary, because I feel like the smokes are a little bit more longer lasting right now, and you throw an incendiary, it gets a little too tricky, especially on maps like Inferno for the uh, for the T's, perhaps. But apart from that, I'm okay with that. That's what I'm saying, right? Separate the T and the CT economy could be the weapons, could be with the bonus money, could be with the kits. Yeah, make it, make it fuck it, make it free. I don't care. Like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> let's try. If you're going to go, if you're going to fucking go wild here, just try something a little different in the early life cycle of CS2, you know, just throw in all the ingredients, see how it pans out. Valve even said, you know, they want to try out a, add maybe a couple of new guns. Yeah. 
That makes me worry. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. <laughs> I, why not, dude? Like, I mean, they're trying to make every gun viable right now, and they've done that. A shotgun's the right. It is a little OP at the moment. I think the MP9 is really overpowered as well for the CT side. And maybe if you add a, an extra gun, the FAMAS is fucking garbage. Get, a, get another one. Get a SCAR 20. I don't know. I've, I've, I mean, well, if, if I could do anything with the CS2 loadouts, I would just add a slot at least to every everything because the it's a little limited right now i feel yeah with the c and the thing is it's only limited for ct sides because you get five options and it's like on t you're gonna obviously have the galil you're gonna have the ak you're gonna have the op and it doesn't almost even matter what you do after that because you barely buy the scout on t side you sometimes people are buying the sg or the krieg and i don't see anybody buying the auto sniper or even considering that but on ct side yeah, there's, there's nothing else you need to worry about. But on CT side, you are trying to get the FAMAS, um, the A1S, A4, yeah, A4, AUG, Scout, and OP. So that's six weapons right there. Just add another slot. And again, like all, most, of, most of the things that are different now about CS2 are worse for CTs, it feels like, than... Like, it's almost like a nerf to CTs in a, in a few different ways. Peeker's advantage, for one, has been pretty bad, so Ts feel a little bit stronger there. Uh, like you're saying, the economy. I, I guess nading smokes is kind of 50-50. It really... It just depends on the moment. I, I but, think it does kind of favor the Ts a little bit more, right? Like, if you have a defensive smoke being put up, yeah. you can't play in front of the smoke, for example. Just one nade, and boom, you're kind of screwed right there. And I've seen this happen, actually, a couple of times. You had a banana smoke there. They just nade it realizes no one playing up close, they execute through it. Like, yeah. you know, that there are a couple of, there's a smoke ready for a CT, they have a flash ready, someone nades it, see if there's any CT nearby, no one there, they smoke, they flash, and they run on through, because they know no one's standing behind the smoke, for example. So, even there, I think it does kind of favor the, the tease a little bit. Yeah, I've, I also, even watching the the phase Mao's Grand Finals, there was like a moment on Nuke where I think Shuhei and another player on the A site of... Squeaky. Of Squeaky, yeah, of Squeaky. Yes. And then FaZe just naded the Squeaky Smoke when they were on the T side, and then they yeah. just killed the two CTs as they were trying to, like, balance these different angles and make sure, oh, it's like, okay, we got to smoke the door so we can fight over here, but then FaZe, Faze is like, okay, we'll just nade that because we know you need to block this right now. So, yeah, yeah, I generally speaking do think it favors the Ts more, too. So, yeah, it feels like the game is slightly shifted in favor of the T's and some of the micro aspects. I'm not sure as a whole in terms of statistics how much these numbers have changed from like, you know, the last six months of CSGO to the first few months here of CS2. But um, let's get into the news. Let's get into some of the news that's come up. Um, there's been some stuff that is released today in terms of uh, new signing. So the bane of our existence in terms of the team we'd have to talk about every single major cycle has finally found an org. Guild has signed the entirety of Bad News Eagles. They have signed all five players. They've signed Devil Walk as the coach. And they also tweeted something about James Banks. I don't know if he got signed as a manager or, or what there. They just but said it, he got signed. I'm not sure in what, but congratulations, Banks. Yeah, I don't know in good what job. capacity, but but uh, I, but I good for he was He was kind of like the, the manager slash... I don't know. He was, good, he was the guy, you know, talking to orgs and stuff, I believe, yeah. for negotiations and shit. So, yeah. I know he was helping them out pro bono for a while with that. So it's yeah. cool to see that, you know, he got some kind of shout out there too. Um, but the the real question is, Blah, like with Bad News Eagles, now Guild Eagles showing up in a in a way where they're now under a contract, do you how much do you think this is gonna change the landscape? Do you think like this team is gonna punch up more now or like what what's what do you think is gonna I mean, happen? I mean, let's let's look at the the positive and negatives. Positives, obviously, you know, having a salary and everything, you're going to be a little bit more... Um, I would imagine, I would like to imagine that now you're like, hey, you know, we, we're getting paid. It's more of a job. And there's just five friends trying to, you know, make it happen in Counter-Strike. And you should, on paper, be having a few more resources as well. So maybe that could, that could be the positive here, right? But I'm looking at the results, man, and it has been abysmal. It has been fucking abysmal. I know the meme is these guys only, you know, they qualify for the major cycle. They play fucking great RMR. They're like a land team and everything. But, and they have been grinding it out quite a bit online. But even online, like, I'm not seeing anything much happen. I'm looking at teams like Bed Boom, for example. You know, uh, your boy Napanese team. You know, I'm looking at all these <laughs> other guys. And, and you, yeah. you can see how these teams are like super, like they're grinding it out. They are getting top finishes. And even though these are online events, these are some pretty, 
solid competition they have going, right? You look at teams like Spirit, for example, and you can see the success they're getting. You see, you know, how they are looking at these guys and like, all right, that's a pretty cool tactic. This is a couple of cool players coming out here. Yeah. I don't see this from from, uh, from the Eagles, right? It just mean what was the last land? The major? Uh, I think it was a major. I, th I think so, yes. Yeah. Dude, that was, that's fucking so long ago. And then, like, they played a lot of fucked on the CCTs, a lot of qualifiers. Like, I didn't see them at, at Rubet. I didn't see them in, in, in Thunderpick. I think they're playing a couple of other qualifiers right now, a lot of CCTs and whatnot. But even there, it's, like, mixed results. And then, of course, they're going to rock up for the RMR, probably, and just going to you know, knock out some big names. It's going to definitely happen. But I feel for Guild, it's very simple. Get a team is going to get you a sticker in the major. That's, yeah. I feel, the prime operative going here. I don't know how low the contracts are, but I think it's going to be very heavily dependent on how they do in this major cycle. And if it doesn't click, I don't know, like, you know, I don't, again, I don't know what the contract agreements are and whatnot, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a long-term plan. I've spoken to so many orgs uh, in the past year where they've reached out to me, like orgs from Asia, from China, even you know, a couple of orgs from this part of the world. And they're like, you want to pick up a team, like, all right, what do you want to do? Like, what's your long-term goal as as an org? And they're like, oh, I want to build a big team, all that good stuff, I want to pick up players. I'm like, all right, this is what a budget's going to be. And they just look at it and they're like, yeah, fuck no. I'm like, all right, cool. What do you want to do? Do you want to get a team that's going to maybe qualify for the major? They're like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'm like, easy, get Mongols. Uh -huh. They're like, we want EU. I'm like, cool, get Bad News Eagles. They're a full team right there, not going to be too expensive. So I feel like Guild picking up this team it just is for the major cycle and they're just hoping it works out. And I'm also assuming because there's no buyout clause and there's no buyout w whatsoever for this team. I'm assuming there isn't. There has, there shouldn't be. I don't that, think so. Uh, that's why, it, yeah, that's why it makes more economical sense for Guild. So that's how I'm looking at this. But then again, I mean, good for them that I don't really see this making them better <laughs> in any way. I, I unfortunately have to uh, agree with you in, in some respects there. I, I will say... Actually, um, speaking of like GMing or like talking to orgs and stuff like that, actually, in uh, honestly, 20, 2021, or uh, yeah, I was actually in talks with Guild to become their general manager. And there were late stages to this discussion, and I didn't reveal what team I wanted to pick up for them because. And um, but but actually, uh, I I wrote a tweet about this like a year and a half ago, like two years ago almost. That I was like I was like when when Bad News Eagles first qualified, I was like this is the team I actually wanted to sign. It was number one on my list, and number two was like a North American team that would have like maybe got it done, but. But it was like in terms of the money there, it was before they ever even qualified for the major. That was the team I was going to give Guild. They never signed me. They actually signed Thorn as a consultant, which ended up leaving them to do nothing, actually. Because I, I think Thorn more or less said, probably now is not a great time to get into this space. But I'm just going to say, had they have gone with me, they would have signed this team. Already would have had three stickers. But, uh, you know, they just pulled the trigger super late on it. In fact, I tweeted about it after the fact. And I don't know if they really cared what I said about that. But uh, I feel like they're just super late. Like you should have done this three years. You should have done this two years ago, Guild. Um, that's that's really where I'm at with it. If you would have signed Bad News Eagles, then I know Thorin said that there was like not really a great team to get in, but you would have gotten millions of dollars in sticker money at that by now. And this team, like you're saying, has been trending pretty badly. I do believe that they're gonna once again have to like we're gonna have to all eat crow on this team and be like, look at their results lately. They've been losing to teams you have never ever heard of. Like they've been losing to who is this Arc Red. They have been dropping a map to eyeballers. They lost to one win. They lost to Endpoint. They lost to Sprout. They lost to like every single tier two team that you just hear like randomly qualifies for anything at any point bad news eagles have not only played to them but they've lost maps to them so this is uh right now i don't really see how this is going to be anything other than a major sticker cash grab that is all it is to me i don't like bad news eagles they just don't seem during the regular season to actually produce any results of note or to really get you any sort of brand recognition beyond the fact that you'll be at the major yes that tournament has the most eyeballs of any tournament by far in the calendar year but there is something to it where qualifying for ESL Pro League or qualifying for a Cologne, Katowice, all of that stuff also enhances your brand value. And nothing of the past three years has indicated to me that Bad News Eagles are capable of doing that. That being said, 
now that they do have an org with them and they surely could focus a little bit more on the game as opposed to, I don't know what they were doing in their free time. I don't know if they were like part-time workers in some capacity, but it just seems like they only could work hardest for the major. And I get it. There's a financial incentive there, but I also think that if, if there wasn't something holding them back in terms of like, maybe they did have to work part-time, but if there wasn't, then I don't know how that's going to change by just having an org backing you. So this to me is actually in a weird way, after all like the negative stuff I said, it's actually an okay investment for, for Guild. I, I think that you actually probably can re recoup everything that you spent on this team and maybe more because your team will have a, I would say 60 to 70% chance of qualifying for the major because they just always seem to do that. Again, uh, sure, yeah, but it's so heavily dependent on that one bulking event, right? Just qualify for the major. If, it, if they don't, oh, dude, I'm, I'm taking a look. All right, I'm, I'm going to take a look at the lands that this org, I mean, these bunch of players have played as uh, Bad News Eagles, right? Antwerp. Tip Sport Prague Cup 2022 <laughs> finals, which they won. First time I'm hearing about this, all right? I am Rio. Elisa Masters Espoo 2022, where they came 9th to 10th. They struggled there. Then a CCT land in Malta, the finals they had earlier, where they came second place to, I think it was, yeah, yeah to Tunnel Fire. And then you had the Blast Paris Major and one ESL Challenger in Melbourne, where they came second. These are the yeah. lands yeah. that they've played. In. And so, yeah, like if I'm Gil, I'm looking at this I'm, and you're just looking, uh, we have, I think we both agree on this. They're just looking from a, from a major cash grab. If that doesn't happen, that's when I'm gonna, you know, everyone's gonna be like, oh, I don't know about the signing. And I still, and I and I believe generally for a lot of these orgs coming to CS2 because of hype and everything, they might be overpaying quite a bit. Maybe not for BNE, but for like, you know, no name, so to speak. But I feel CS2 in about a year, we're gonna see a lot of new fresh faces coming out. A lot of kids you've never heard of, it'll be cheap as fuck. I could pick them up if you have a good, you know, scouting team or someone who knows what he's doing, right? And you could actually, I believe, in a year and a year and a half, build a solid team, maybe with a known, one known veteran, one IGL, uh, you know, and just try and pick up a few unknowns, take a bit of a gamble there. And I think, you know, we will eventually see an org just pick up a bunch of unknowns and make you know, relative unknown, so to speak, and then make a pr actually a pretty solid team over time. But that requires patience. It requires hiring the right staff. Requires hiring the right scouting team. I don't think most of these orcs have that. So, you know what? Guild, good for you. Good for you. Okay, another org that is looking to come back into the space. Uh, I've heard some rumors about who are some of the other targets, but the two things we know are that, one, NRG is looking to come back into the Counter-Strike space. And the second part of this is that they are looking to start with an NA core with OC being their first target. So what's your gut reaction to the fact that NRG is coming back in? Happy for Counter-Strike and NA overall, obviously, right? Like having legacy names like that come back is always uh, a good thing. Uh, it's not like some of these fucking fans, fans are like, oh yeah, this orcs left, NACS sucks. I'm like, dude, this hurts you. So it's our game. Don't be, yeah. don't be, don't, don't be fucking stupid, right? So NRG coming back is good. I think OC to pick up, considering what you know Liquid are going for. Uh, I guess uh, you know OC. I don't think is. I think it's actually looked pretty solid, even though they were struggling recently. I think he wasn't like you know the guy you could point at and be like, yeah, this is the guy, this is the reason this team is struggling. So I think it was a solid pickup. Um, then I'm looking at who else I can pick up, and I don't know much about the rumors. Uh, I did hear obviously EG probably going to be dropping the team. I'm looking in the team. and I'm like. Automatic, maybe. I think it was still fucking solid. You know, then this is a guy who is a veteran. You want to have a vet in in that in that team. And then what? They said they might be scouting someone from Liquid, but who's left in Liquid? Like Nav. Um, I don't I don't know about Nav leaving Liquid. Honestly, unless looking to pay a lot of money. Uh, and uh, then I, yeah. And then I, I just kind of hit a wall right there. Howie. I'm like, okay, who else are they going to pick up from NA? I don't really <laughs> think of like. So any names were available. So, so my short list is that I OC is the only one that seems to be like, it's not really confirmed, but it seems like it's a more official report at this point that they're Sounds pushing. Well. But 
I would say that Daps is the clear coach, or no, co not coach, IGL of this team. I don't think that they're really sold on anybody else coming in to be a leader for this team. And if they want it to be North American, it does make sense to to look at him. He obviously, in terms of individual skill, is is like pretty bad as a Tier 1 pro. But Daps has even played on teams that have been in the top five of HLTV ranked. And it's been a while since then, obviously. And I would say that his little stand-in stint for Liquid was not the best performance either, but he kind of was just thrusted into it. So I would imagine that if he puts a little bit more time into the game, he can play himself back into, I'm not going to say like he's going to be an average tier one player in terms of skill, but at least decent enough that he can hold his own and not, he's going to be a hindrance to the team. He will be bad. He will be the worst player in the server in 9 out of 10 of their matches. But he's obviously capable of putting to a team together and at least calling a style that can actually win on the biggest stages. And that's where I think you almost have to. And I'm just going to speak from what I've seen because uh, I've been playing Face It here, like high-level ELO Face It. He's playing with Breeze like every day. Him and Breeze are playing like duo cues or even tri three cues in North American face it every single day. So I think it I think that's probably the the core of this lineup. I think you already said one of the names, Automatic, Daps, Breeze, and OC. That's four names for me. And that's where the, the fifth name is a little bit confusing. But I, I wanted I want to I do want to hear your take for that core four that I think is very likely to be the foundation of this energy. So <clears throat> excuse me. Uh yeah Daps, Breeze, OC and Automatic. Money. Yes. Oh, that, that, that doesn't sound good to me at all, honestly. <laughs> like, that doesn't sound good to me at all, at fucking all. Like, I'm looking at this team, and I'm like, oh, poor OC. Poor OC. Like, I think he's much better. Like, Audi, he showed what he could do, and there were actually some signs of life in that EG team before, you know, everything went down the drain, not their fault. It was, like, the, the Oryx fault and all of that, and I think Audi can still be very solid, but he's getting on with the years and everything. He's not, you know, looking at him as kind of like your star player who can you know be a consistent carry he's going to be just kind of like the, the bedrock of the team right oc is going to be the opera and then i'm looking at breeze all right all right let's see what breeze has done i'm just looking at his results here when was the last time he fucking played dude he hasn't played for a while because the eg team moved away from him and uh so breeze well, has well, been literally just grinding face it and premiere games i mean that's good you know the fact that he's still at least you know he's grinding his playing and everything but then Dude, like, he hasn't done anything in so long. Like, I'm looking at his numbers as well. It's, it was pretty fucking abysmal even this year. I'm just looking at a lot of red. A lot of red. Yeah, and, and the good ratings are against teams like Cartel Terraza. I don't even <laughs> fucking know who they are. That's it's not like a team. Canada or some shit. That's not yeah, a team. Yeah, it's not even a team. And, you know, I'm looking at a team called the Puggers. I want to see what that is. I don't know. They don't even have players on fucking Angel TV, dude. It's like... It's, it's not even a team. There are two Mongolians and two Americans. Like, the f he's fucking dropping 0.95 rating against two Mongolians and two Americans. Like, a fucking mixed team. I just feel like he's had his time to show what he can do. Even when the team was rough, he could at least, you know, show numbers. He didn't show that. Um, Audi, I, like I said, I have my reason for having him. But if Breeze comes in, I just feel this experiment is going to be dead in the water. I'm okay with Daps. Uh, I can I can see Daps coming in. I can see Audi and OC being there, and you get two young hard fraggers who's going to listen to Daps, going to listen to the system, who, are, who can who are actually have some brains and can work in the system. I'm okay with that. I would rather right now take a risk with the more of an unknown upcoming talent than go the way of Breeze. It's mm. for me that's just a burnt name. And, and I listen. I hope he still finds a way back into the tier one C C S and whatnot, but uh, this NRG team, I want the team, the orc to find success. I don't think they're going to find it with him. I don't know what you think about that, but I just don't. Breeze is a bit of a question mark because of uh, how, how bad things were for him at the end of his tenure with evil geniuses. I have a bit more faith in his ability to find his skill again, given that where I really was pretty down on Breeze towards 
t kind of the end of his playing time with EG was that I would I actually did look at his face at games and how much he was playing and things like that and he just wasn't playing very much in general and I think that's due in part to the fact that he was playing with a team that he had no faith in and obviously wasn't run very well from the outside too that we knew that and so to see Breeze motivated again like he was on the world leaderboard for Premier actually in the first I like handful of months and yeah. he's still doing well he's moved away from playing premiere because there's just so many cheaters in north america now and that's a huge problem that valve needs to take care of but he's playing a ton of face it like he's playing like eight games a day and that's that's when breeze was at his absolute peak as a player when he was playing for nrg and actually the beginning of eg he was still playing lots and lots of pugs on top of the fact that they were scrimming and practicing too and so for him to have this sort of, I don't know how his motivation is going to look if he gets signed and then he's scrimming, if he's still going to play pugs on top of that. But that's when he was like top 20 in the world type of status when he was doing it all, when he was probably like at 100 hours past two weeks every single time. And I know some people are going to be listening to this like, why aren't pros always doing that? It's like, because it's hard, because it's really, it's it actually is really tough to just sit there for that long every single day and just keep playing when you know that your mental health is deteriorating when you do that. Like that's just that's just what happens. And, like, and that's just pugging, by the way. And after that, your 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 actual job is fucking, you know, the playing other parts more. of the game, like, like playing, yeah, playing watching scrims, it. theory crafting, watching yeah. demos, watching your your opponent's demos, talking about Counter Strike, where you're like, I can't do it anymore. Like, dude, it's <laughs> imagine like you have a nine to five job, of whatever you you want to do, right? And you come back home and you do the same fucking thing without I know. Even getting paid for it. It's insane. Yeah, and it's just to be better at it, you know, and people like it's so weird, like the lack of empathy, actually, from from commenters sometimes where they do say stuff like that. Like, how come he doesn't just play more? It's like, why don't you do more of your job when you get home? Because you probably will get paid more. You probably will get paid more, too. You know, you'll probably actually if you actually take the time away from work to work another six hours, there are scaling returns there. You will probably like most most professions have a way that you can clock in more time in your overtime and actually actually do something to at least educate yourself or literally just flat out help your job like you know everybody jokes like just code learn to code it's like you probably can't actually learn to code and find some efficiencies in your job which will then net you more money but you're not doing it so you're asking out for everybody else to do it it's like it's okay moving on from that i will say that the mystery fifth to me, I think the obvious answer, if you want to go for someone domestic, is Swisher. Uh, if you want to take a chance on someone that's of the like tier two space right now that hasn't really gotten a call up, Swisher has been the best performer on M80 for some time now. The If you really want to poach somebody, you could go for Malbs. In terms of role, he probably would fit the team just a little bit better. But in terms of pure numbers and output, Swisher has been the better player. And when you look at Swisher and how he's done at the most recent two pro leagues, which is the only time he's had a chance to really play against you know, European opposition in one of the seasons in the first one earlier this year, he actually put up a 1.09 rating. And if you look at, if you look at like his KD, he's actually, I mean, he's positive KD. Um, he actually did better in the series where he played against Ents, where he actually ended up, or I think it was, um, or it was like, he played a, uh, no, was it, was it Ents or was it, Ents, he did pretty well. Actually, you know what? You look at all three of these series when he was on ATK and he played against Ents, Liquid, and Astralis, and all of them, he had above a 1.0 rating. It wasn't like he farmed some crapper team. He, mm -hmm. one of the series, he had a 1.0. Yeah, yeah 1.05 against Ents. Against Liquid, he actually had a 1.24. And against Astralis, he had a 1.04. So, like, consistently doing well. The second time that they went to Pro League this season, they he did a little bit worse. Uh, with a 0 0.99 rating but still this is on a team that's losing all of their maps he lost all six maps still had the best rating on the team and if you look at Malbs, he did better than him too and uh and every time i see Malbs, i think Malbs has in all honesty Malbs is a better mechanical player mechanically speaking he is stronger than swisher and he's a little bit more aggressive but sometimes he just goes for that extra peak that he doesn't need to sometimes he just kind of doesn't seem like hey hey you have a man your man up in a situation right now you don't need to go for that next swing and sometimes yeah. those kind of little mistakes amounted to m80 especially against tier one opposition losing to european teams it's like you give them that one in on a round and that was so costly because now everything falls apart after that and it's like your mechanics were good enough to already get you that advantage but you're not going to win three consecutive duels in the same round against Astralis, you know, like they're, they're, someone's going to shoot you in the face eventually. Uh, so, yeah, I'd probably go with Swisher. I don't know if you, if you would if you have a want to take a I, side on that. I 
I actually agree. Yeah, I'm just looking at his numbers as well. It looks solid. The only the only problem here is the fact that I'm idiot picking up slacks, right? Yeah. And I don't know if they're going to be willing to let go because they seem to be taking it seriously. This, you know, they're seriously looking to build a proper team. You know, NA EU mix. They they already have a Danish player at the right there, Manx, and they look like they're trying to really make this happen. Uh, and I'm assuming if they let go of either Malbs, Malbs or Swisher, it would really be a hit for them. I don't think they're going to be able to find a local domestic player to replace that. So I don't know if MAT are going to let go of them unless NRG is willing to like really break the bank for it. But that's a team which could be solid. Also for Breeze, right? Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna say this. I'm looking at Rops right now and how fucking incredible he is. Best CS2 player right now, period. I'll just put it out there for me. And I feel it comes a lot down to the grind again, right? I know it's a new game and everything, but he's been playing non-fucking stop. And that will have an effect on how you play in officials and whatnot. So yeah, if Breeze is able to find that zeal again to, you know, really grind it out, could be in Premier, could be on face it, what the fuck ever, right? Just enjoy the game, have fun. And if that translates into the server, I still think he has what it takes. At one point, he was so much fun to watch, man, that old lineup he had when he was playing with Daps as well back then, right? It was Breeze, Cirque, all those guys. And if... If, yeah, if he does come back to that form or even close to it, yeah, sure, this team could work, but it's such a big if for me, you know? So, I guess time will tell. Um, yeah, at least I'm happy. I'm happy to see NRG's back. I think it belong in Counter-Strike, so that's there. As a whole, and the macro picture of this all, yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, to see another org take the place of EG, more or less, is a good thing, because for all... All I know and what I remember of NRG, there weren't these kinds of mishaps ha with the team and just mismanagement and just kind of like a bad structure behind them. It felt like it was much more straightforward with them and with EG, it was just so much bloat. Um, I don't I don't actually want to get into EG, if I'm being completely honest with you. I want to continue with what you were saying and talk about some of the best players in CS2. So, Amen, brother. That You already mentioned Rops' name and... I, yeah, I was already going to throw that question at you that, you know, Twist is the one that's saying it first, that he's like, you know, Twi or Rops is the best Rops is the best person in CS2. So you wholeheartedly agree with that? I said on the desk as well for on CAC, I was like, okay. I, th I think when they were going up against Mouse in their, was it a grand finals or the group stage match? I forget, one of those two games. And I'm like, Frozen just might be the best uh, raw rifler in the in the tournament, just looking at the way he was playing. I think it was the finals, yeah. He was just like pure rifling prowess-wise. He might be his most consistent output. He did kind of fall off in the, in the finals, though, but I said Rops was the best player right there. And because, mm. think about it, right? You go all the way back to Sydney, <coughs> multiple reasons. Firstly, uh, he was never... You never looked at Rops as like the cracked aimer in the team. You had twists. You had rain when he wakes the fuck up, right? It, these are the two guys to look at. Rops is just a, you know, just perfect positioning perfect crosser placement, just crazy awareness, and he just makes that work with his aim. And he's got solid aim as well. But right now in CS2, I don't know what it is, but just watching him, I'm like, the guy's just hitting shots. Like, holy fuck, he's hitting some nutty shots. And on top of that, you speak to Carrigan. He said in an interview as well, I had a chance to speak to him in, in Sydney too, and he's like, and Neil rather. And he was like, yeah, man, like, Rops is just putting in the grind. Carrigan said as well in interviews how Rops has been, you know, cooking, putting a lot of effort into the team and making it work. And you look at CSC as well, where FaZe, you look at the wins they had, dude. It was some very scrappy wins against teams they shouldn't be struggling against, teams with standards and everything. Rops was the difference maker. He had like a 1.23 rating heading into the grand finals. Well, the second highest rated player was Twist on 1.03 rest of them were yeah. like pretty much negative right so and this is so the best player by far in my opinion the most consistent player in the best team right now in cs2 yes with a small sample size it's just been two lands and one online event and whatnot but i just feel like sure it could change in the next couple of months you know seeing how you know, we have blast and everything coming up but from what i've seen this one month of cs2 rops number one easy I have a pretty difficult time trying to pick against Rops just because the caliber of the events have been very strong for him. Um, you know, you look at the numbers of players that have played 
online events and people are still going crazy over donk but i've seen donk play against higher level opposition even in some of these qualifiers and he does fall off a little bit so i'm not really going to actually just put his name into this conversation yet and i also don't want to really take too much from online results too early either so uh, for me rops would be yeah rops would be I'd say one of the top three, pretty pretty convincingly. I would say that other people whose names I would have thrown into the ring pretty early here would have been Monacy. I thought Monacy was really really special at Sydney, and I. But we haven't really seen too much from G two after that. Just one so event. so unfortunately, it is just one event. And beyond that, I think some other names I really liked early on were was Elige. I thought Elige looked fantastic too at Sydney. Yes, he did. Yeah. So I, I actually, I actually, after one event, might have said Elige was the best. Um, if it were just Sydney, it would have been, it would have been between those three. Actually, it would have been Elige, mm -hmm. Rops, and Monacy. Uh, obviously, there were a couple other people that did pretty well at Sydney too. But I thought, for whatever reason, and kind of probably including what I've seen from them in the past, like I was kind of willing to start crowning those three pretty early on. I'd say Frozen's consistency throughout the game has been also something to behold. Uh, but another guy, actually, who's in some ways stolen the show for me, especially with the Grand Finals and how that wasn't really the kindest for Frozen, has been Yimpat. Uh, Yim I was Yim about to just say Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jim Dude, Yimpat, like, too. It's 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 kind of crazy to me because he didn't see in Sydney, right? Because he, he couldn't make it. his right. or whatnot. Um, they played Thunderpick online where they only lost to Faye. They've lost Spirit as well, but they got knocked out by Faye. Again, online. He, he, he's had his debut at an arena. Now, that being said, I think the Chinese crowd is much more friendlier than, let's say, a different crowd might have been, <laughs> right? As much, they're, much, they're more like, hey, you guys are playing Counter-Strike. Fuck yeah, we love you guys. So it's a much more nicer crowd and everything. But dude, like, the guy was just a fucking rock. I, he was playing the anchor positions like a fucking veteran, like someone who knew exactly what to do. Firstly, aim, fantastic. But more than that, the way he just has a contingency plan for seemingly every scenario where he's going to face when there's a hit coming in and the team are talking about his fucking face yeah right you have you have fucking rain running in followed by twists and rob's looking somewhere and he's still able to hold his own i think jimmy um again it's only the one event i really wish it was in sydney i wish it would have been very exciting to see him in sydney as well but he if one more event one more land event i think jimmy's name could be up there he just looks so comfortable uh, in this game right now yeah what is your uh, what's your take on a leash I think he's looking fucking great. Uh, I only saw him in, I saw him online as well. Uh, I think it was playing Thunderpick. Or, it's all mixed up for me, but one of uh, Yeah, sometimes Sydney, I Sydney, Sydney. I want to talk about Sydney. Let's he, just say he Sydney. Great. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, was, he was fucking great. I think he was a difference maker. And also, like, you could feel, it's interesting, because having watched Allegis, you know, his, uh, his growth as a person, across many across liquid right all over different iterations of that team and watching him complexity uh so i'm beginning complexity and watching him now it just seems so much more relaxed he seems so much more happier more comfortable and i feel it's both ways i think that has not had an effect on the team as well overall and in turn the team has had an uh, impact on him where you know he's like i feel very happy here people listening to me that we're all on the same fucking page and whatever initial teething issues they might have had i think it's been figured out right it's been sorted out and this seems super comfortable and a comfortable allege is a fucking dangerous allege and you could see that in sydney man he was just tearing through everyone allege was the first person that i was seeing hit good spray transfers in cs2 because i and thought that's the, the uh, that's before the bug changes fixes by the way yeah. so yeah. That's even more impressive. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he was doing it at Sydney, and I I felt like when I was playing the game, I was like, man, spraying feels really wonky, and it still still does even after some of the changes, but it doesn't. But when he was doing it pre patch, I was like, oh, okay, it's just me being bad. <laughs> like, bad in the game. yeah, I'm just not as good as this guy's. Okay. And, and everyone, by the way, half the pro players as well. I've seen some fucking whiff sprays, man, and it yeah. looks look good. Oh yeah, totally, totally. So, so he's uh, he also strikes me as a guy right now that's putting in a ton of work. I'm sure that he's incredibly motivated because of the new game. Also trying to prove everybody wrong that, you know, he was the problem on Liquid, and I'm going to say that the veteran presence that he's brought this team has renewed the spirits of a couple of them. Floppy behind him has been playing very well too. They didn't really yeah, they didn't really have the best thunder picks but i'm still excited for them come fall finals in a in a week's time so yeah th i think that he's he definitely uh is one that i'm going to be keeping my eye on pretty closely but uh yeah i think in terms of in terms of top players anybody else that really comes to mind for you so like i had those like 
four ish right there, which uh, with like uh, Yimpat, Brops, Monacy, Elige. I also want to throw Frozen's name in there. You know, you got to see a good amount of the teams at CAC that were from the region itself. And it has become a slight topic that has just started here and there with the teams like Lin Vision and Tai Lu. What do you think the current state of Asian CS, where, where do you think it's at right now? I think it's Mongols and everyone else. Hmm. And it, it is sad. It is sad because domestically, I really think it's it's a it's a mental issue. I know it sounds like it's just an easy cop out or whatever, but if you look at Lin Vision and I feel I look at the current Tai Lu, like they've had different names like Cyclone, Rare Adam, Beach again yep. once upon a time. They allow the moment to get to them. They, mm -hmm. you know, you you look at some group stages and stuff. They 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 seem to deliver, especially when they fly out. They you know they're focused in, they're they're doing good, and then it's an elimination game against a team they should kind of actually be beating on paper because they're looking so good right now, or it's like uh, the first stage game, and it just gets to them. And they seem to have like a game plan and everything laid out, and when shit hits the fan, they just don't seem to have a, a backup plan or like, you know, a default, so to speak. And I think it's not about, of course it's about the game, but the it's a symptom of an overlying issue with teams like Lin Vision, like Tai Lu, where it, they let the moment get to them. Mongols don't. Mm. Mongols, I feel like, and I, if you look at their 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 demeanor when they're winning games against, when they're knocking out teams, other Brazilian teams, almost took down heroic and everything. You look at them, fuck it, no, no one's yelling, no one's screaming except one guy maybe. Everyone's like super calm, composed. They don't seem to get affected by, they don't show how they're getting affected by a round being <coughs> lost or by you know, oh shit, guys, if we win this game, we're qualifying for the fucking playoffs and whatnot. They don't seem to get affected by that. And I think why Mongols are a step above individually. I think there are a lot of really good players in, in China. If you're looking at the Lin Vision guys, I think uh, players like Zachers, uh, G, I think they're very solid. You look at Tai Lu, I think all players, three players are freaking solid. The core is actually really, really good, you know, with, with, with Jam Young and uh, Mercury and Mosia, me mechanically super, super gifted. I also feel, because I don't know how Chinese contracts are, but there is, you can easily build a one really, really solid team, which could really compete with some teams out there. It's just that they refuse to make changes. And when they do, it's the classic, let's pick up a couple of guys from EU guys, and it's going to work out. We're going to qualify for the major. We saw Tai Lu do that. That fell apart. We, we're seeing Rare Adam do it right now as well. We're seeing Wings Up doing it as well. They have, um, what's the guy's name? Kriaz. Sweet. Kriaz, yeah, they yeah. got Kriaz. You couldn't play it because of well, whatever rules they had there. But I think because of the Shanghai Major, which, which just got announced, by the way, but you know, it's been kind of like a open it's secret a known for a secret. while. Yeah. yeah, it's a known secret for a while. I feel like for a lot of Chinese orgs, and this I've heard from a couple of sources as, as well, they, for them, they need to have their org, their team at the Major. They have to fucking qualify. Now, it's a year away. And which is why a lot of them are going for these changes. A lot of these crazy changes right now, right? And they're trying to make something work. And I feel the only two teams right now who have kind of stabilized, who can make it work is Lin Vision, if they're able to get past a mental barrier. And for Tai Lu, if they replace Advent, mm. make him a scout, make him a, make him a coach, I don't fucking care. I think he's got a good brain for the game, but he just cannot be in the server anymore. Get someone else. They, they have like 10 players on their bench. Entirely. Yeah. Just pick someone up, man. Get slowly, but I heard he went to Valorant or something. Get slowly in. Let Jam Young or anyone else who wants to feel like picking up the reins of calling, let them do it and let's see how it works out. Barely is going to be any weak link. I think that is the way forward for this team because it's been the same for like three, four years right now. Uh, but Asian CS, Mongols. I think they can look good. I've been seeing them play recently. They've been on the grind as well, nonstop, playing in the local land tournaments as well. There's a very healthy domestic scene in, in Mongolia. So Chinese CS, it's just these two teams. They need to make a couple of changes. Mongols, by far the best. They might lose mm -hmm. to these teams online. They might lose a couple of teams here in, in Asia, but they go outside. They're the ones who actually play good. Yeah, and that's shown with some of their results and wins this year. Like they beat Cloud9 at Katowice, I remember, kind of to kick this whole year off. So they've... Yeah. Had a couple uh, really, really nice victories over. Furia, yeah. Imperial, uh, knocked them out, in fact. Yeah, uh, yeah. Almost, they... almost knocked out Heroic. One round away.
Yeah, they've been really close. I mean, they've been the most competitive against European opposition the most regularly for me. Whereas some of these other teams, even though they've gotten a few cracks at them, uh, yeah. we've seen them crumble. Like, uh, I think Cyclone, was, were they playing Imperial at ESL Pro League? And uh, wait, how did that go? Did they win that or lose that? Actually, can't uh, no, remember. I don't think they won a single game there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They didn't win that one. Yeah. They were really like, close. They went to like OT on the third map or something. But yeah, yeah. but it's just not able to close it out. And. Excuse me. It's kind of unfortunate that Mongols didn't uh, they didn't qualify for EPL, if memory serves me right, like this season. Mm -hmm. So it was Linvision. Yeah, it was Linvision and Cyclone. And I think Cyclone actually got one win there. I'm just taking a look real quick here. They Yeah, they, be they beat Imperial and they beat M80. Oh, okay, okay. So they did. They did get a couple of wins, right? They, they lost Imperial, 9Z. Yeah. They got destroyed by Fnatic and Na'Vi. But that's the thing with this team. They have a couple of wins, but they, I, I don't see them making deep runs ever. You right know? okay but okay. i'm looking at mongols i'm like hey man if they're able to just crack that this is a team who could consistently have potentially in the future some playoff appearances so yeah uh on the bright side with the with the perfect world major we have i am you know uh china as well early next year hopefully it does bring there seem to be a lot of fans in china you know and hopefully if you can get some more fresh players out there maybe get you know like Perfect World just hires Advent and makes him sit in their local 5v play servers and just, just picks players like, yeah, I want that, I want that, I want this guy, I want this guy. Make a couple of teams. I'm sure something can happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's let's talk about some of the teams that are really killing it right now for for CS2. Uh, FaZe are, if I'm not mistaken, on a 15 BO3 streak or 15 maps, match streak. 15 match, match streak, yeah. Match streak. So that's including like BO1 victories, which... Um, they had only... One is it BO1 just the one versus victory? NIP? The the OT game, yeah. Which yeah, practically yeah. could have been a BO3 because that was like, what, 28 to 25? <laughs> it's it's so, ridiculous. Yeah. So, okay. I wanted to talk about phase because going into CS2, I, I had the inclination or idea that some of the younger teams would probably rise up just a little bit. And, but there was always the possibility that older players would be able to find motivation once again. And I feel like um, it's a little bit of both here where, you know, the number two team is Maus, who were like one of those young teams. I thought, OK, I thought this team should do very well because they had an incredibly strong pro league run in CSGO. And then the game switches over. So they got a lot of young talent who are going to be very hungry up for the grind. And then they were in good form. And then they came up. I didn't know. I thought FaZe was probably less inclined to do well but i think that the motivation for them has given them a new lease on life but is there anything you've noticed over all of these tournaments you've covered with them or i guess they weren't at they weren't at rubet were they technically they were in rubet they were in thunderpick but i did see a couple of the games that were there yeah. okay so i mean basically though it's sydney and uh um CAC. cac they've been absolutely killing it uh in sometimes a little bit of a shaky fashion but what do you think if there's any key characteristic for FaZe that has made them such a world beater team. I think it's the the remnants of their uh, of what they've achieved in CSGO, right? Like you you go back to last year, the best team the best team of the year last year winning all those events and everything, the one uh and then of course it was a dip in motivation and everything, right? But I'm looking at how they beat all these teams and obviously the meme goes classic phase all the rounds comeback kings and all of that but if you dig in a little bit deeper and this sounds like such a cliche but and it's not something i usually enjoy talking about because it's such an intangible right but it is the mentality it really is their mentality which all these other teams lack now i have to say a lot of these other teams obviously for sydney a lot of them didn't probably didn't put it put in as much prac right so you could see phase were clearly the best team there like you, you could see the way they were kind of defining how the meta was on on nuke for example and some of the shit they were doing in inferno the mid smoke and everything a lot of teams are playing very defaultish nothing too cool you could see phase and put in the work so they were way more prepared than a lot of teams at sydney you go to thunder pick you have all these online teams and everything but their phase is still able to hold their own and for cac it shouldn't have been this close against NIP. It right. really shouldn't have, right? And, and then you look, and sure, you might have all the um, it, jet lag and all of that, but they all had jet lag. That 2-1 game against Mouse easily could have gone the way of Mouse. A couple, if a couple of like pop-off runs with Carrigan and Robs hadn't gone their way in overpass, I think Mouse wins that series, right? 
And even in the uh, the game against Ents, again, standard situation with Vladan, who, by the way, played really well, in my opinion. Um, again, they should have been phased throughout, right? But they do kind of slip it up. And I know it's a meme. It's, you know, it's their style, entertain, most entertaining team in CS and all of that. But I feel like just the of the synergy that they've had all this while, you know, the, with uh, when it comes to Carrigan and everyone else and all they've been through. I'm just watching the body language. After the beat ends, after what was a fucking close series, that amount that come back in the final map and everything, we just see everyone just gathered together. No crazy celebrations, nothing. They just look at each other. I, can, I couldn't read Carrigan slips, but I could almost hear him say something like, all right, guys, we got it done. We're phase. We're going to win the next fucking one. It's, 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 it's almost like the belief where you're like, we're going to win this no matter what. And also, I feel like initially when Neo came in for Raban, he had to learn these guys. He had to learn how to be with these guys. They're, you know, what the environment is, everything. And it took a little bit of time for him to gel with them. I think it is going in the right direction as well, right? So I believe for FaZe, it's the intangibles when it comes to being together for two years, having won everything what worth winning kind in those two years and everything. And now with the motivation being found, you know, it's it's a remnant of that, which is really giving them an extra edge. That being said, I feel if you go like by early next year in like March, Feb, March, when a major cycle kicks in, I don't think they're necessarily going to be the best team. They will have that edge though, you know, that, that mental edge. But there were so many flaws in the way they're playing in CAC. They're making too many mistakes. There was there was so much inconsistency in individuals as well, which is why, you know, Rops was the guy mm -hmm. hard carrying it. But if you're, t if you're asking me, why FaZe is the best team right now in this one month of CS2, it's mainly the mentality. I mm -hmm. think that win in Sydney, because they put in a lot of hard work, hard work paid off, and they're like, yeah, this is us, we're gonna win it. And I think that gave them the edge, which made them win, go on this, like what, 15, 16 series streak. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to argue against that, given that they were able to mount so many comebacks at CAC. In every game, man. Yeah. So that I, I do understand that. I feel like they also were one of the teams that probably when it when like we're seeing the nade usage and just like the very slight meta changes in it, they I'm not I feel like I probably at least from from when I was watching Sydney closer, maybe saw more innovation or kind of interesting ideas come out of say a complexity team, but FaZe did the right amount of like not too much innovation, but just enough that they're not playing the same game as CSGO for sure, but they do a couple things here and there where they have pretty good reactions. They do throw a couple nice smokes. I like that they, I think like they've made Nuke a map where they're very scary to play against because it just feels like they, <clears throat> they have so many good responses based off of the new utility and with the outside, like outside smokes in particular on Nuke have got, definitely gotten weaker, but FaZe are one team that seemingly, seemingly know when to use it the most, or like they don't use it the most, but when to use it and also how to counter against it. And also they, they did a pretty good job against Mao's to like counter the counter to Mao's where it's like, oh, Mao's are always throwing a nade at it. They're always doing a molly. And then I remember in the grand finals, they threw the cross smokes against Mao's and they knew that Mao's were going to blow all their utility on the cross smokes. And then they just threw cross smokes again. Like they, they get that. We know how you guys are going to play against this thing because of the new interaction. So we're going to think one step ahead. It's like, you know, it, it's just, yeah, exactly. They're that one move ahead in chess. I'm not saying that they're playing galactic chess, but they're just playing chess one level above Solar the other teams. Chess. There we go. <laughs> um, sure. I know. I, I I agree with you. It's also like when it comes to prep work, so to speak. Right. Again, I 100% agree. It's not like crazy mental smokes and whatnot, but like I also might say they might be the most aggressive, one of the most aggressive teams right now in hmm. CS2. Um, I look at the Mirage against Mouse. Mouse. Firstly, oh, by the way, phase seven map pool. Legit. They're not necessarily the best on all seven maps, obviously not. But they have the option. I mean, we're going to ban Mirage. We can ban Vertigo. And you play against them, you're like, oh, shit. Have they been good at Vertigo? It. Have they been good at that? I don't think they've been good at it, but I think they got a couple of wins. I'm going to check. When have they played it? When have they played it? I actually... Um, let's see here. Maps... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember seeing a Vertigo game from them at, at CAC I, I at they, least. Did they play it at Thunderpick? They, they played at Thunderpick twice, and they played in Sydney once. Oh, they, they played it at Thunderpick. 
Oh, yeah. oh, they actually, yeah, they played it against VP in the grand finals of Thunder Pick. Okay, and, yeah. And then Mouse, Mouse beat them on Thunder Pick, on, on Thunder Pick, and then they lost to uh, to FaZe in, in Sydney, right? And in the grand finals, FaZe like, yeah, we're just going to ban Vertigo. All right, you like Mirage? Let's play Mirage. CT side, dude, FaZe were like, you had Rops pushing Palace, you had Carrigan and Brokey pushing B Apartments, while yeah. other two guys admit are just like, just throwing shit at mid and mouse they, they're just given no room to work with right and i noticed this on the t sides and the ct sides as well and on multiple maps right they dictate how they want to play they dictate the pace of how they want to play right now and they had this ability to kind of cow teams and obviously you know when, when you're going up against a if you're playing if you're a good team like a top five top ten team you want to play your style you want to you don't want to be just you know, balls to wall, just take fights out there because you have really good aimers on the side of FaZe as well. And I feel like a lot of teams really struggle there. They When FaZe have the game plan, we're like, we're just going to get in their faces early on. I think teams really, really struggle. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They do They do just force the issue so frequently. Like, they're always... Also, uh, yeah. also Rain and Carrigan seem to be getting a new lease of life in CS2, man. Like, Dude, Kerrigan was winning was... some duels at CAC. I did not expect him to be winning. Dude, for, like, for sure. he was hitting some shots, man. I was like, what is going on? And Rain himself said, he's like, dude, CS2 just feels like it's, it fits me. It's a run and shoot. <laughs> yeah, cool. I, I kind of hate that, but I also get it. I yeah. know, but listen, <laughs> it is kind of funny, right? He's like, what, 29, 30 right now? Yeah. You know, 30-year-old talent, and he's just running in, and he's like, 20 year old kids and are not able to do anything against this 30 year old Norwegian running at you, just popping heads and hitting shots where you're like, what the fuck was that rain? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot of little things that seems to just work for phase right now. I don't know how long that's going to last, but at least for now, it's looking good. Yeah. I mean, he won MVP at Sydney. I mean, it, I, yeah, I guess, I guess technically Rops won two MVPs. Like, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to value the CAC one much more where he was such a such an obviously standout player at that event. Oh, yeah. But uh yeah, for okay. Okay. Um so 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 Mao's to me are the clear second place team right now in 100%. in in this game. Um for for them I we don't need to linger too long on Mounds. I guess. I guess uh, you could. We could put forward some of the same same ideas here. Actually, you know what? I kind of have a fun, more fun question, because of uh, phase and kind of the questions up in the air with them, with the possible signing acquisition of you know, like Game Square might grab them and yeah. uh, Twist might leave to to uh, Liquid as well. Uh, does seem like there is a limited shelf life for this phase team, unfortunately. Um, where do you think do you think Mao's is a surefire thing to be the best team if phase disband or do you think there's someone else waiting in the wings that could p possibly uh, overtake them right now um let's say let's say in like a month let's I mean right now right now Mao's does seem like the second I, best I, team I, but... I wish I really wish I saw complexity play another land hmm. just to see where they stand I don't, I don't want to just you know base it off of Sydney yeah but they look really good, but I feel I've seen more of Mouse across CSGO, the ending of CSGO, and yeah. CS2. Even in Sydney, man, even with Standard, that was a pretty commendable effort they, they put up, right? They eventually lost to FaZe. The only team they're losing right now is seemingly FaZe. The best yes. team in the world. Yeah. So just based off that, I can just say Mouse are the number, two number one team if FaZe were to lose twists. Um, and I'll stand by that. I don't. I don't see any team right now who necessarily have the the depth of just pure individual fragging prowess uh, yeah. that this team has right now. I think Exertion is phenomenal. Torji looks so good right now, even though you know with the op situation, and everything maybe he'll right. He does go missing a couple of games here and there, but I think he's looking pretty solid. Frozen up there for me, one of the best rifles in CS2 right now. And Jim had just been an absolute revelation. It was already good, but right now I'm looking at him just grow exponentially. And Shuei's doing his job. Shuei individually, he does... I feel like he's fragging a little bit lesser than he used to earlier on, but then he doesn't really need to, I guess, because of the way his teammates are working. So, And if he needs to, he does, you know, he, he can still aim, he can still frag out, so that's good. Um, also, just like the approach of the game, I just like... The, the map pool they have, I like the approaches they have. I don't think they're as, I don't think they've innovated enough uh, as much as like, you know, complexity or phase in CS2. 
Uh, I like them, you know, I, I would love to see more cool stuff come out from them, but for the time being, they don't really need to. Yeah, lo long answer, but like just to, to summarize it, yeah, if FaZe lose to us, I think Miles are clearly the best one, at least for the next two months, end of the year. Yeah, it's also going to be difficult for other teams to always prove themselves. I mean, the thing is, actually, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think Mouse are going to have as many opportunities for the rest of the season to actually prove themselves because they are playing the World Final, but they're not playing the Fall Final, so it's going to be kind of like opens the door a little bit, and you would probably say moving into the Fall Final phase are the clear favorites, but then there's going to be a chance for someone else to be second place there. By the way, after Fall Finals, there is a low-key... The Lisa Masters has a low-key some really good names, man. That's... that's Mouse? Ends. Yeah, one Mouse. Complexity. Yeah, Mouse and Complexity. Yeah, it ends. I mean, the rest of them, uh, not so much, but Complexity. Yeah, and that's... Furia looked okay. They looked decent online. I think okay. I lost to VP, I... but yeah. I, I'm going to, yeah, the, the elephant in the room is VP for me. That's basically, to me, the sleeper third place team right now. They came in first, they won um, Rubet. Rubet, they came in second yeah. place at Thunderpick. They are pretty, they're not, I'm not always going to say they're convincing, but they actually, they put a really good fight against FaZe in the, the grand finals there of Thunderpick. It was close. Yeah. So I think that's the probably the one team for me right now that, if I were to, I, I've done this on another episode of this podcast, I think last week, where I kind of looked at the rankings with uh, King T, and we said if we looked at the HLTV ratings, like, yeah, VP were at the time, I want to say like ninth, and we we're like, shoot them up a couple slots, like easily shoot them up a couple slots. And I still think that to this day. And for, for what I saw, actually, for the unfortunate thing is obviously Ents weren't playing with their starting five, so I can't really uh, yeah. fault them too much for that because their stand in was. You say he was like good. I think he was okay. I think he's all right. Like I, I wasn't. I, I didn't. I, think... I, I, I think it was good for. I, I think day one he really had nerves. He really struggled. With yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me. He was like. Uh, yeah, he got better. He got better, but he got, I... def, he got infinitely better. Um, I, I'll say this though, right? Like I'm yeah. putting in the, the fact that firstly you're standing in for ends. Yeah. A lot of pressure right there. Number one, number two, dude. This is the biggest event ever. <laughs> like ever. This is a big jump. Yeah. He's playing in an arena with a lot of with a big crowd and everything. And I think he did a commendable job, you know, with with, with a crowd and everything, which is a lot of pressure, right? So now I look at that, I'm like, was he light out insane? No. But he played pretty smart. He wasn't like lost and out of place and whatnot. So for example, if I'm gonna build hypothetically an international team or an American team, and I need someone to kind of be an anchor role, maybe just, you know, work with a pack. I might give this guy a shot. Vladin, he's been yeah. tested. He's been tested. Mm -hmm. He passed not not with flying colors, but pretty reasonable performance coming out from him. And uh, you know, obviously, it's on Twitter, so you take it with a pinch of salt. But everyone answer like, you know, he did a great job. Blah blah blah. No one's saying he was a big liability, so to speak. I think, for example, if NRG picks up Vlad and be like, hey, you know, can it just be our like tertiary rifler? I'm all for it. I think it'd be a good opportunity for him. He'll be fucking cheap as fuck to get in as well. You see, so I mean, okay. I want to hear the the take then. If NRG have this core already of let's just say it's DAPS, OC, and automatic, you would want Vladin over Breeze. I like Vladin over Breeze. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. That's you know why it's very yeah. it's, it's very logical. It's not even a hot take. No, I've seen more from him. I've seen more from him at a high level event literally last week than I've seen from Breeze in the past one year. Yeah, Ooh, that's it. Not even a hot take. I think that's inarguable. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually fairly inarguable. That's okay. actually a logical fucking take, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. I mean, I think that it's actually very it's actually a very reasonable take. Um yeah, so but it's kind of like one where I doubt NRG even had this guy on their radar by any means. I don't think anybody really had this guy on their radar. In fact, I don't really know how to ends even found this guy. Did they say anything about it? why did they get this guy? I, I I don't know. It's more like I think it was very very last minute. Do you have, I think Dia's visa got rejected like two or three times or something it was super last minute. Yeah. And then I don't know. Someone spoke to someone. He's an I Nation guy. Um, I saw Nick Kassad as well about it. And Yanko, they're like, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty solid. Obviously, Kassad and Yanko are gonna be like, oh yeah, I Nation boy. Yeah, let's fucking go. He's a fucking yeah. The best, glazing so. from those two is just like yeah. It's so I'm, I'm not gonna. So when yeah. I when they when they said that, I'm like, okay, he's not shit. Yeah. Fair enough. But <laughs> I, I had my issues and I saw day one, I'm like, oh Kassad, you asshole, you fucking lied. Yeah. He's fucking he's a fucking shitter. 
and then he performed. And I'm like, oh, you know yeah. what? Against the teams you played and what you've done, great job. Uh, especially against FaZe, dude. He did, That was a commendable performance he had against FaZe. So, yeah, all things considered, I think Vladimir was pretty... Uh, it was a surprise for me, uh, mm -hmm. this event. Okay. Third place team, you say it with VP, right? I get it. I, I watch him in Rubet. Dude, Flip and Fame look fucking sick. They look fucking sick. Flip, Even might, was like, Flip might be, like, actually the low-key, actually top five rifler in this game right now. Yeah, that's... I, it, I, I, but could, it's only on could, it's only online. But but I but I thing. I would that's say I would say he's like fifth. I think I think Flip Dude, might be better it, than I don't know if I'm saying he's better than Donk, but I think actually you know what I've seen him beat better competition. So I think yeah, Flip's better yeah, than Donk. Listen, I don't want to talk yeah. about Donk. Like yeah, I'm no. so done. Like I'm so <laughs> until sick we see him hard. play better t people, it's hard play to land, like yeah play land against like some top ten teams, and then I'll talk about him. Right now, just like I don't care. I really don't care. But who surprised me? was Mir. Mm. Mir looked fucking good. He had some highlight moments overall, not just like popping off in one or two rounds, but I think he played really, really good in Ruba, didn't really have a chance to see much of Thunderpick. Now, that's the thing, right? If one of these events were in LAN, I'd be like, yeah, VP third, easy. I think they look really good right now, but is, it, is Mir and these guys gonna perform this level because it's a new game and everything? And we've also known from everyone who's played on LAN that, you know, with Twist said it, Rob said it, a lot of players said, like, LAN CS2 is very, very different from online CS2 compared to CSGO, you know, LAN and online. Yeah. And it should, on paper, be easier on, on LAN, but I want them to be tested on LAN before I put VP third place. In fact, I'll go on a limb, and I'll put Complexity there. Ooh, wow, Complexity third. I think there I was really a... I really like what I saw, dude. I really like what I saw. Where was the, uh, I, I remember that, so basically for the fall finals, for the fall finals, the teams seed themselves for group matchups. And so, I don't know if you've seen this, but the way that the teams self-seeded, so, you know, every, this is like back in Star Ladder, like 2019, I don't know if you remember, yeah, yeah, but I remember. yeah, so teams will, you know, get the list of one through seven and of the other teams and then list them so that they could produce the seeding in-house. First seeded team at the fall finals, by the teams themselves, phase. Understandable, of course. Yeah. Number two, though, is Vitality. They put Vitality number two. I don't know. I think the seeding might have happened a while back, though, before the Mezzi Magisk move. And if that's mm -hmm. the case, I, I get why that's there. I mean, I, I would get why it's second. With Mezzi, I would put Complexity above Vitality, personally. I... Uh I wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Like, uh, obviously, the Mezzi announcement wasn't met as much fanfare as compared to other roster signings right yeah i i think it's solid i think obviously obviously majisk has that major winning legacy right so that definitely makes a difference absolutely mezzi hasn't won anything close to that i think it's solid i think it's a really really good pickup for vitality I think it's a he is it's almost like you know almost the same level except that majisk has that super high level experience winning shit that's a difference for me I don't think they're on. on the same plane. I don't think they're on the same. They're, but right, Mezzi right, was like one of the better anchors in tier 1.5 playing for Fnatic. Magisk was legitimately a top two anchor in the in top the teams yeah. in the world. So, yeah. and if I, I went through, I went through like my whole, like all the way down to top 35 players of the year. Mezzi is like my 36th best player of the year, roughly. Magisk was 18th. So, He's still good, and it, for the sake of what Vitality had to do, given that Magisk was being ripped away from them, it is a good signing in that respect. In terms of what I now expect the results to be with Mezzi, it's just going to be worse. Like, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Like, he's he's just not, he's not as good. Think it's got, I, I actually think Magisk... Um, um, look, if Vitality had kicked Magisk for Mezzi... Dumbass fuck move. Like okay, no, yeah, that's what I'm. No, that's right? okay. That's kind of no, no, my no. angle I, on it too. That, yeah. that, that is not what I'm. Uh, that I no. I, we agree on that. Like no okay. way. Like I would not replace Majisk for Mezzi. But you lose Majisk. You get in Mezzi. You get someone who can really, really. He can actually frag. He, uh, I, I just feel like he's being in just uncomfortable positions in a lot of teams. He's the one guy I'm going to give that to. When I'm like, you know, you just been kind of hard done with the situation with your lineups and everything. Now all I have to do is fucking frag. Number one. Number two. International team. You're fucking English. Yeah, he's Number three, English. he has called before, right? So he understands the game 
to a higher degree, I want to assume, than just the average fragger out there. He's also pretty young at the same time. So then you're going you're gonna to be coming in with someone like Sphinx and Flames. Uh, that trio, you have Zywu and you have Apex. And even his demeanor, I think, is a good counter to the emotions of Apex. He's a much more calm mm. guy, but not like super calm, like, yes, I don't care. No, it's just like a very nice, fun ish guy, so to speak, at least from what I've seen so far. So I'm not just looking at this fragging prowess as a pure anchor. I think we just is better. Yes, absolutely. But I'm bringing the other factor for Mezzi and what he can add to the team of Vitality. So I, I think it's going to take a little bit more time. It is unfortunate we haven't seen much of Vitality because they, they got knocked out by FaZe in Sydney, you know, pretty ruthless uh, format there. They lost the best to one to Bed Boom overtime as well right so i don't yeah. think we've seen enough no online games which i feel is an issue and i feel like a lot of teams who are going this route of not playing a lot of these online tournaments and just playing all the lands they're gonna really struggle come the major they're gonna be in a very rough position we saw this in paris and look at some of the teams right now and how much of fucking grinding online look at vp look at phase look at phase look at even fury yeah. how these guys are just grinding it out they're going to have more success than even a five studded, five star studded, you know, lineup like a Vitality if you don't have enough reps right now in this new game. And I feel like that could be the potential down for Vitality, not Mezzi, but Vitality, like because mm. of the lack of reps. I'll put it simply that the trio of Sphinx, Majisk, Dupree, that's a core that obviously can win majors, but the core of Sphinx, Flames, Mezzi, I, I that's you're gonna that's a that's a top eight at a major to me i don't think that's a major winning core but, 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 but don't you think like you know when, when you take out dupree as well they're looking long term right they're looking to make this team last yes much yes. longer and win a major maybe maybe not in copenhagen maybe in shanghai right and, and i'm okay with that i'd rather have that than have a team just be like all right our team's getting a little too old we need to cut dupree we need to cut majisk and oh fuck, we have no one to pick up right i, I really do like the approach and vitality it's just that I just wish it played more. <laughs> I'm sure they're getting yeah. invited. Well, uh, yeah, I'm sure that they did too. But I also think that they probably are a team that wants to practice and take time away from just going through the rigor of matches day in, day out. Especially given the fact that they're a team that knew they had their fall final, world final slots secured already. So they know that they're going to get yeah. in some some LAN reps. Whereas some of the other teams that accepted... FaZe is the one team that's weird to me where it's like, you guys had the fall finals, world finals, CAC... But you still played Thunder Pick as well, and still like, won it. <laughs> yeah, and still won it. Like that's really, really impressive. And I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's going through the minds of Phase. Maybe it's the fact that they think that this is all like they've, they're just on borrowed time at this point. So maybe that could be part yeah. of it. Um, I'll, I'll continue with the the rest of the seating here, and we could just kind of wrap up with this topic and kind of like are you're you're looking towards the fall finals and what you're expecting there. So to continue it or reiterate, one it, for self seated. By the teams at the event itself, they seeded phase number one, vitality number two, complexity number three, Cloud9 and Navi are tied for fourth, fifth, it says. Um, then Heroic, because they're going to have to play each other in the first round anyways. And then it's mm -hmm. six is Heroic, seventh is Astralis, and eighth is NIP. So would you take issue with any of that ranking? Or, like, I feel like the bottom gets a little bit messy for me because of Heroic situation. It's it's interchangeable, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, um, I would put heroic personally bottom last. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, I. I'm, I'm not sure if I really actually. I think NIP is the worst. Uh, I think NIP is the worst. So, but I'll put a heroic second well, to last. Even with this current current iteration of heroic, I think NIP, they're better than NIP. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. Right. Just, um, just being honest, it, yeah. it's not even a real team right now. Like, well, what's your roster for? You have Alex, S attack, Config, Res, and Hetrick. Now, okay, here's the thing, right? My argument for NIP potentially, that's a big, big potentially being better than Heroic here in, in, in Blast is because Rez had a light out tournament. It was Oakland all over again, Maui. Okay. He was running it back. He was looking incredible okay. at CAC. You know, in fucking credible. I was like, okay. Jesus Christ, it's fucking great, right? Hedrick was solid as usual. You know, just nothing crazy, nothing, uh, nothing wild. Config, little hit or miss, but when... When they're winning, he was a big impact player. Just the simple bulldozer running in, getting a couple of kills. He was looking great. Kind of like Rain. You know what I mean? Just no think, all aim. It works for him. Now, S-Attack, he was calling 
at CEC, so I'm gonna give him a bit of a break, but he's kind of like that, you know, just the support element and everything. And Alex coming in, look, I like what Alex has done in Movistar. Obviously, these, this is a higher caliber of like players he's gonna be working with. If Rez and Config and Hetrick can play the level they were doing in CAC, where it was literally with a stand in playing in, right? I think they actually would be overall holistically better. In fact, I would like Max Turn to replace S Attack. Ooh, <laughs> that's funny. I uh, I don't have a strong take on that one. Why but... why, are you, why are you keeping S Attack when you don't need it as an IGL? You don't need it as a as a secondary opera or whatever. You have yeah. Alex coming in. You have Hetrick. Pick up a new kit. Pick up Max Turn. I think he showed a lot of promise. Stand in situation again, delivering. Yeah. Why not? Um. You know, with S Attack's performance, I I too would give it a bit of a pass just because of the calling and kind of like S Attack is kind of a known glue guy that he's not really S Attack is weird where like your your floor could still be pretty bad with him, but he kind of like is a stabilizing force for you. Whereas Maxter, just a little bit less of a known quantity, even though I think he definitely has more potential at this point, but. I still don't know if that would lift them above Heroic to me, where in some of the online games that they played, they actually can still look pretty serviceable with the core of... Dude, it's all Dupree, man. Yeah, Dupree which is... Looks... Dupree looks so good right now, it's insane. Yeah, which is really, really strange, to be honest. As a space taker, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really expect that Dupree could be holding his own against so many youngsters, but he actually did. And with Kadian coming back... You, you're you're actually working with like that's a reason no no that's yeah. a reason why i'm putting heroic at the bottom because kaden coming back instead of that, that's a reason i have them over nip kaden's a better a caller than below. alex uh, dude you, re you really think like okay this is kaden's a better opera than head trick kaden is a better opera than head trick too yeah yeah f fine no but i'm talking better about opera, better caller understand this though right you're coming to this team imagine the forget in the server right we have to talk about what's also happening outside of the server and Caden's coming back to a team where he's being replaced. He's going to play with his replacement. His temporary You actually think he's going to be like, fuck them kids, and you think he's going to throw. I would fucking love that. Dude, imagine. Right? I, you I actually think happen, he's going to do this. He's not going to do that. Like, I, I don't, look, I genuinely don't think he's going to, like, obviously actively <laughs> sabotage the team. Okay, okay. But overall, the, te the team environment is just, it's just going to be like, all right, you know, all right, guys, you know, we're back together, I guess, for this one tournament, YOLO. It's not going to work, man. At least NIP are trying to be a team. At least they, they're they trying to be. This isn't even a real team. It's like, you know, five guys are like, hey, guys, we called up for this event. Let's, you know, get back together and play. <laughs> let's tap your girlfriend. Sorry about that. You know, don't, don't hate me. I'm right here. You know, let's play. It's. I just feel it's going to be such a weird environment okay. for Kaden coming in. And, and, Tess, and Tess and Shush, look, no one really knows what really went down there, right? And But the fact is, obviously, when he got kicked, I'm sure Tess and Shush also had some say in it has to have happened, yeah. right? And then I think Zyphon's actually solid. I think Zyphon's low-key uh, a good, solid pickup overall. I think Zyphon's going to play quite well with, these group, with this group. I'm not going to lie. I think Zyphon's also a reason where I would put them above NIP just because I have more face... It, like Zyphon to me is better than S attack, that's for sure. Okay, 100%. I'm just basically playing this this one v one out. Like I don't think either of these teams are gonna do significant damage at this event. It's just in this this head to head NIP versus a um, heroic battle. Who's, who's worse? Yeah, who's worse? And I think NIP oh, wait, are worse wait, right wait, now. We're not talking about Astralis. What are your thoughts on Astralis? What do you think about Astralis? I'm curious. Man. Oh, okay, okay, we'll move on. Okay, I, this, like this will be the last. This will be this is how will be how we close this this show. Okay, is right. we, we talk right. about Astralis. Astralis had a really nice coming out with this five band lineup where they were yeah. able to overperform and i would say that they they did that with actually some some pretty good calling and tactics thanks to mm -hmm. uh thanks to blame f in my eyes and then mm -hmm. they've kind of regressed to where i felt like they should be which is a team that really shouldn't consistently find victories over even other tier 1.5 teams unless you got pop-off performances from blame f and device that were earth shatteringly hard carries but then mm -hmm. you get like the regular performances from a couple of these other players and man dude people were so pissed off at me after one event i just like by the way guys I've watched Borup for four years. We've seen him on the old Heroic team. We've seen him go through multiple logo changes with Heroic. He's always been the same player, and he's still the same player. Like, 
it has not gotten any better. If you changed out Borup, you got one good rifler. Give me Zyphon on this team. Give oh, me, yeah. give oh, me yeah. one of the two guys. Either one of the two guys between Yabby and Stown. If you can't get them, like if you couldn't have gotten both, just give me one of them. Give me Tessis. Give me Shush. Give me anyone. This team is actually a legitimate top eight team that can actually punch up here and there because then you have blame f device and a probably more assured thing in any of the heroic riflers literally any of the heroic riflers would have been fine but borup was never going to be a guy on a team for me that was consistently going to be top four like if you make semifinals with borup you've overperformed for my money yep. and that's kind of where i saw them before and now they're hitting what they should be doing which is like you know like 10th to 13th in the world I completely fucking agree. Uh, I think um, BlameF obviously still the hard carry of the team in his style. You may hate it or love it, but I think, you know, he's the reason there. Device still has, I remember the mouse game uh, in, in the semifinals where Device just woke the fuck up and overpass, and he was unplayable. He was unplayable. They couldn't do shit against him. But just the fact that for me, I look at Buzz and Stare, I'm not even going to bring Borup into the conversation because I he didn't really have much, man. He was a couple of rounds here or there, maybe. That's about it. The inconsistency of Stare and Buzz is very worrying. You already have Borup, who's a non-entity, in my opinion, when it comes to like the fragging, uh, the fragging department. And if Stare has a good game, oh boy, yeah, the Stratos look great. Stare drops off a little bit, Buzz has a good game, it's fucking great. I, I, need, a, I need a secondary <coughs> stable rifle. Not even a superstar, yes. dude. A yeah. stable secondary rifler after blame. Someone who can do something. And, and it, it just boggles my mind when you're having all these lineup changes and everything. I mean, to be fair, we do know that they were trying to pick up those two guys. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If they got Stan and they got Tesses in this team, this is a team where I'm like, yeah, they fuck. They ball. They fuck yeah. They fucking, they ball. I'm yeah. starting to Charles hype trade again. Then I, I stop hitting the org again. I'm like, yeah, you know what? There's going to be good CS. That's what I want to see. Exactly, but, exactly. But my problem here for Blast is because of the the cloud of, uh, you know, just uncertainty for a couple of these players, me, meaning, I'm assuming, Buzz and Borup, where they're like, are we going to stick around? Like, what's going to happen with us? Are we still going to be in a team? I think that really is going to lead to them really struggling at Blast as well. So they're bottom there, but at least we've seen some signs of promise from them in CSC, so if they're up there. But... Uh, yeah, there's this battle for the bottom in the heroic and nip. It's beautiful, isn't it? The, how far they've fallen. It's, it is totally possible, given Cadian maybe having some renewed energy, that Astralis is worse than them at this because they're in the same group. And with how the fall finals work, like, so group B is vitality, complexity, Astralis, heroic. It's very possible that Astralis does come in last place in that group. Like, I would say complexity is more likely to. I think, I think, um, Vitality and complexity are fighting for one or two, and then the battle for bottom is between heroic and Astralis. And some something is tipping me off from just how the wind's blowing today that I actually think Astralis has a good chance to come in last place. So maybe maybe it's not NIP. Well, maybe NIP can still come in last place on their side of the group, on their group A. In fact, I almost would I almost would guarantee it. I would almost be willing to go out on a guarantee that group A's last place is nip do you think that there's any team that can be worse than them i'm trying to make a case you're looking at boomage and one <laughs> just no i can't yeah i can't i just look at the nip team I'm like guys what the <laughs> fuck are you doing right it's not even a final lineup by the way they're still supposed to make a couple more changes or something at least one more change so okay yeah okay right uh scandinavia cs in fucking tatters yeah, we'll see if Fnatic actually put that lineup together. But I think that's gonna I think that's gonna do it. We're about approaching the hour and a half mark. That's generally how long I want these to be. Um Last thing I want to say, Bla, is first of all, thank you for making time. I know you are super jet lagged because you've traveled probably across uh, more of the globe than ninety nine point nine percent of people on the planet this year in the span of three weeks. So yeah. pre appreciate you for that. And uh, is there anything that you wanted to to plug, like what's coming up for you or pe where people could find uh, you? Nothing, man. I mean, yeah, you can just like follow my Twitter and everything. But thank you for having me, dude. Like it's always, you know, fun to uh, talk about CS, especially like you said, you know, having the being given the opportunity. Very thankful about that to uh, do the first two big CS2 lands, right? You know, back to back. So it's kind of like this episode kind of helped me to kind of organize my thoughts as well as to where teams are and everything. And, you know, in our line of job, 
you know, when we do all these fantasies or talk to each other at events and shit, it really helps us have an idea. You know, it kind of uh, gives us a sense of cohesion as to what we think the CS world is right now. So this was uh, not just, you know, a pleasure just to talk to you, talk shit about, about CS with you, but also actually helped me to organize my thoughts. So that's there. And also kept me up for a few more hours. So I try and kill my jet lag. Okay. All right. Well, helping jet lag uh, one podcast at a time. And uh, as always, this has been the night shift. Just <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Blair. <laughs>